Hello, and welcome to another episode of For the Love of Sports. My name is Michael Raziel. This is the show where we get to talk about sports, we get to talk about business, and we get to talk about everything in between. Wherever you're listening, however you're listening, you know exactly what to do. Like and subscribe on YouTube, five-star review on Spotify, five-star review and say say something really nice about me and my special guest over on Apple Podcasts. I have Steve. Oh, shit, I almost did it, Steve. Steve. Hegel, entrepreneur and sports content creator, John Wooden Award voter. Steve, how you doing today, man? Good. How are you? It's a great day to be alive, Steve. It's a great day to be alive. Everyone is, but man, we're in conference championship season. We have Champions League on. There's just so many sports. Baseball's coming back. I, there's my two favorite months of the year are October and March, just because of the sports. The weather's usually pretty solid as well but yeah. just because of the sports steve and i love it are you are you a fan of this time of year i assume yeah this is a great time of year i mean college basketball games starting you know late morning right before lunch on the east coast going all the way till past midnight um yeah if you're in the west coast you wake up from breakfast time college basketball <laughs> you watch till you know nine ten o'clock at night um i know there's a couple nights ago there was a uh, west coast conference game it started at 12 30 east coast time mm-hmm. which technically was the next day but still you know the point being yeah non-stop college basketball around the clock uh, through Sunday, and then of course you have the selection Sunday show, and then starts back up again next Thursday. I can't wait. I uh, I did something a little weird today. I was like, just kind of because I was watching some of these conference championship games and conference matchups. Because honestly, I actually believe conference week is like championship week is kind of like sneaky, almost a little bit better than some of the tournament, right? Like those first two days of the tournament, they're unrivaled. I don't care who you are or what you do or why you do it. You're going to stop work on Thursday. You're going to put on a game. If it's in the background, whatever you're going to do, and you're going to love every second of it. But, like, this week is so much fun, and the previous week, right? Because all these teams, while, yes, we know when com- when the tournament comes around, it is literally one and done. This is the end of your season. All these teams are currently, many of them, especially in the smaller conferences, are fighting for the opportunity just to get there. And pretty much all of them know, right? Like, this is essentially, like, this is the rest of their season. If they win, they're in. If they're out, they're not. And it's just kind of the... This little mini March Madness that goes on that not too many people watch, and I mean, I know you love college basketball. There's just there's just nothing like it, man. I yeah, it. I mean, there's there's so many good games on between now and, and Sunday afternoon. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and all, a lot of teams are fighting for a spot in the tournament. Uh, and you know, mid majors, you know, the that automatic berth is for that winning their conference tournament is is most likely the only chance they're going to get to get into the NCAA tournament. And then of course you have the Power Five conferences where you're going to see schools like. Like North Carolina, just for example, or Wisconsin, you know, or Michigan, they have to win a couple of games in their conference tournaments to even have a chance to possibly get over the bubble. You know, we'll see, man. So we'll see. Oh, but the thing that I did was I, I looked up the schedule for the NCAA tournament, like that first Thursday. It all just says TBD, TBD, TBD. But I just looked up the times. I just wanted to know what my day was going to look like and how I cannot wait. Well, I can tell you, I can tell you from years of experience, your day is going to start about right about twelve. They'll start the. Mm-hmm. The in studio show, and probably about twelve fifteen, they'll tip off the first game, and they won't tip off the last game until probably ten forty five and eleven o'clock East Coast time. So it doesn't get any better. Yeah, so about one in the morning is when it'll end. You know, the next day, and then of course Friday's the same thing, and then Saturday mm-hmm. they stagger the times. I mean, last year, I remember watching that North Carolina Baylor game? That was a crazy yep. game, and that was the only game on at that time slot. So, and then of course they had they staggered other games later that evening. But you know, it's uh, incredible. It, it, it's I can't great. wait. Yeah. The Memphis Gingaga game last year. We could we could do this all day, Steve. <laughs> Steve, uh, usually the, you know we're a couple minutes into this already, but the first question I normally have for people outside of you know talking about college basketball is, why do you love sports so much? Um, it's just I guess just the excitement um, and the memories I've had from watching particular teams and and the fact when they when they get you know you watch a team and if it's a team that's been downtrodden for years and all of a sudden they break through and you know. Win the, especially like college basketball to win the conference tournament and get to the final four win the national championship and then of course other sports just you know i mean i'm a i'm not a huge baseball fan i'm a baltimore Orioles fan so never i mean mm-hmm. they won in 1983 i was five years old so i'm 45 now so will they ever win again will i ever really see it i kind of really don't remember when i was five years old so it'll be great to see them come back and win it sometime in the next you know half century but you never know what's going to happen but something like that just even again getting to the playoffs is a great you know great great story and great memories so just just the memories i think from you remember sometimes where you were who you're with when you're watching a particular particular game particular moment in a game somebody making a game-winning shot you know so i mean chris jenkins oh yeah i'll that like that's all you have to say do you remember chris jenkins and everyone's like yep and my favorite part of that shot always and forever will be when the shot goes up 
you just look at Jay Wright, and he's just on the can- the side, and just goes bang before it goes in, and then it drops, and he's just like, "Yep, national champ, whatever." And it's just <laughs> one of my favorite uh, videos. Doesn't hurt that it was over North Carolina. Um, that never ever hurts. But hey, they made it there. North Carolina is an incredible team, so it is what it is. So let's talk about this a little bit. So you're an entrepreneur, you're a sports content creator, you're doing a bunch of stuff. John Wooden Award voter, by the way. So excited to jump into that a little bit. But like, you have a couple different sites. You have just college football, just college basketball. Uh, just co- just U.S. Soccer, uh, ussoccer.com, the other two, .net, if I'm not mistaken, right? All three are .net, sorry. All, all three, three are .net, .net. apologies. Yeah. So, yeah, so you have all these sites. Where where does this love of content creation come from? Because, right, like I I love all these sports, it sounds like, just, you know, maybe not quite as much as you do, but uh, but on a similar level. And, you know, I like having this show. This is kind of my outlet. I'm curious for you where and why the, the, the idea to have these sites and have this content go up, where where's the love for you come from? Uh, what comes to me is from all the sports. Like I've always been a big college ball, basketball fan um, my whole life. College football too. I, I was. I, I'm always. In, I'm into pro sports as well, but more college sports. I just think the the love for the game for college players can get so is, is so much more deep and intense. Um, not, never to say pro players that are not, yeah. but I, I just think it's it's a bigger deal. As for soccer, I played soccer my whole life. I still play, and I mean, I've I've loved to see the growth. I love seeing the growth of the MLS in the last five to ten years, and now they signed the Apple. Uh, TV deal, and I think it's only going to continue to grow dramatically through the next couple years as we go toward the 2026 World Cup, which will be in the United, primarily in the United States. Yes, for the most part. That um, I'm extremely excited about. Yeah, I think that's going to it's going to be a takeoff from for the next couple years with the MLS with the Apple deal. Um, a growing number of players are coming over here that are big European stars. I think you're going to see somebody like I don't know if Messi per se, but somebody like him in the next couple years. I'm surprised actually Cristiano Ronaldo didn't come to the MLS. I mean, there was a couple well, talks. You see the him. contract. Like, yeah, yeah, the contract. It was all it. about the money. I mean, playing in Saudi Arabia, does anybody now see him play? I mean, I no. I don't even know where to find the game if I wanted to see him play. So nothing nothing personal against him. I mean, it was all obviously a big money deal, and he took it. But I still actually could see him coming two or three years from now. and Because I saw what Zlatan Ibrahimovic did for MLS a couple years ago, and he was late 30s at that point on the back end of his career. But he had several great years for the LA Galaxy. So... You know, players like that. But I'd like to see the MLS in the next handful of years get to where they're getting European stars in the prime of their careers or becoming mm-hmm. stars, not just getting guys in the twilight of their careers. So I think that's the next next goal for MLS. And I'm sure they'll get there. It keeps growing. You know, it's, it's becoming a better league year in and year out. Um, you see the NWSL, the women's league, has grown tremendously as well, and they keep adding new teams. So, you know, the growth of soccer is great. And now, of course, the next step for the women's national team has been there. They won the last two World Cups. But can the men's national team elevate themselves too. I didn't like Burhalter's comment. I don't even know if he's going to be coached. There's so much up in the air with that. But I didn't like the comment recently where he said that, oh, the goal in 2026 should be to get to the semifinals. I'm like, well, I think the goal should be to win. No. I, mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know what's the point of getting to the semifinals. That's great and all. But at the end of the day, I mean, you don't get a trophy for finishing the third and fourth. I mean, you get to the third place game or third or fourth. I mean, I, I don't know. So, and, of course, that's a whole other story with Burhalter and whatever happens with that and who's going to be the next coach. But, you know. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff going on there. We don't need to dive too deep. I got better things to talk about. Um, but anyone wants quick Google search, you'll uh, you'll see a bunch of stuff. So that, that that's pretty easy there. But uh, Steve, so talk to me a little bit. So there's, I, I do want to get back to that Apple TV deal because I'm curious from your standpoint. You love the. I mean, I don't really watch too much MLS. It was kind of nice when it was on ESPN Plus because I already had it, and that was a very easy. Oh, second TV, bang! Like I can just watch you know True. the ball go back and forth on the bottom TV. No sound, but it's still something on. What what type of content do you have up? on these sites, your college, college football, college basketball, um, U.S. soccer sites. Like, what, what is the type of content that you're putting up there um, to, to just give the people a little bit more of an understanding? Yeah, most of my content would have been just uh, starting out with now is, is I, I go to a lot of games, and when I do to get, uh, one of my goals is to try to go to all of the Division I men's uh, venues. So I've been to 27, went to 27 this year. College football started in the fall. I was supposed to go to a few more. I only got to eight. I was supposed to hit about 12 to 15, but I had COVID for a couple weeks, so that kind of shot a couple of my trips, unfortunately. Um, so giving fans a feedback of when I do go to the games of what it's like to go into a live game at Penn State or Maryland or Rutgers or wherever. Uh, same with college basketball. I'm going to start with MLS stadiums this spring. I know the season just started. I haven't been in yet, but once the weather gets a little nicer on the East Coast, I'll probably hit a lot of stadiums up and down the East Coast. That's a good uh, portion of it. I have an analytical system I built. I was going to launch it this year for MLS, but I'm still kind of just playing around with it um, based on um, each team and what how to – like rating the teams. I mean, everybody has their power mm-hmm. rankings, but I kind of did my own. So that would Kind of like Ken Palm well. or something like for college yeah, basketball? Yeah, I, I built one for college basketball as well. I've been playing around with it for several years. It's so – there's so many different things you can do with it, and I'm, I'm still kind of trying to find the right niche with it. 
So, and it's a lot of work to do it as well. So it, it, it's, I've kind of just still been kind of putting it on, putting it on hold for the back burner, but love going to games. And I kind of give the fans the feedback of a game and, and saying, Hey, you know, if you go to this arena, this is what I look for. You know, you know, student section's great. There might be nobody there. You know, and you see the, the good part about it and the bad part about it, you know, great crowd in some places, some places there's, there's nobody there and the people there aren't paying attention. So, <laughs> and do you do like top food in the venues? I assume you have to do something like that, right? I didn't do that. I guess I could. I, I never really. I, I'm not like a yeah person. That just I guess eats it's more for like certain spots, right? Like, so I'm a big Mets fan. Been to City Field. That is the best Shake Shack that I've ever been to. I've been to multiple okay. Shake Shacks. I don't know what it is, <laughs> what they do to that Shake Shack in City Field. I couldn't tell you. Gotcha. By far the best Shake Shack. And every time I go or any time I know someone's going, hey, the line's probably going to be a little long. 100% worth the wait. That is the best Shake Shack I've ever been to. Not even a question. Of course, it's more expensive because that's just kind of how it yeah, works. But yeah. there's just certain ones like that. I was out in the uh, Arizona Diamondbacks uh, out in Chase Field. I've been they there. They have a churro dog. So it's a donut with a churro inside with ice cream and, like, whipped cream on top. It was insane. Like, it's <laughs> – I feel like if there's a stadium that has, like, a special food kind of like that, and now that's like maybe a little more pro than college now that True. I think about it. Yeah. I don't know. Put that in the back of your head. That's a, that's a good idea. It. I never really okay. thought about that. Yeah, Check I mean, out. some of the some of the college basketball arenas are – I mean, you're just going to get the basic hot dog, yeah. pretzel, you know, Chicken fingers. popcorn, yeah, and a soda. That's all you're going to get. Uh, but I can see that definitely for ba- and for baseball as well. I've been to probably 10 of the stadiums around the country, and I, you, you have seen some unique things. The one thing that always stands out to me in baseball, and uh, six or seven years ago, my brother lived in San Francisco, and uh, at the time for his job, we went out and visited him. My parents and I went out and visited him, and we went to a San Francisco Giants game. It was the middle of August, and no joke about the seventh inning. I'm looking around, and I, I did a double take, and people were drinking hot chocolate. I mean, it's like 55, 60 degrees. But, I mean, it was a little chilly, but I was just shocked. I was like, this is August in San Francisco, and people are sitting here in the seventh inning drinking hot chocolate watching this in a night baseball game. I, I'll never forget that. <laughs> to each his own. I hope yeah. that was in the uh, in the blog that day, uh, or maybe just an aside. Hey, by the way, I went to this game. You guys should know about it. Um, so that's really interesting. I guess, why why all three sites? You probably could have just done one, right? Like, what is it? Where, where's the passion come from all three of these sports and sections of the sports that makes you say, like, no, I need to do all three of these? Yeah, exclusivity for each site I want to do different with. I started with just the college basketball, um, and I, that was my primary passion. Then college football, because I, I love going to college football games. I think it's just a, a niche, you know, with, like with, with each school. You know, it's a special Saturday. It's a Saturday tradition for some of the schools, especially down in the you know, South SEC, um, Big 12. Um, but And then soccer has just always been my – been I played soccer and I, I know a lot about it. I've kind of transitioned that a little bit to where I was originally going to focus on um, MLS, NWSL, and USL, but now it's just more like just the MLS and a little bit of the NWSL and of course the national teams. But they come in cycles, so you know they play the World Cup and now it's it's kind of a lull for a while. The women are going to come back up in the summer. They're playing the the 2023 World Cup in uh, Australia, and New Zealand, so that'll become a primary focus. But they can come and come and go if they they don't have many games for certain time periods. So. Love it, yeah. And the women just won the She Believes Cup, I think, for the yes, fourth? yeah. They, I think they pretty like much that. won that every year. So, but yeah, yeah. it's going to be big this summer though because that World Cup. I mean, they're going to be one of the favorites, but they're not going to be the the hands on favorite this time because uh, there's some stiffer competition in Europe, and, and we'll see what happens this summer. It's going to be interesting. I'll watch. I'll cross my fingers. Well, of course, also to too, to let all the viewers know, it's going to be crazy times. I don't know if they've announced the time oh, yet. Maybe yeah. they have, but it's in Australia, so it's like if you're watching at ten in the morning, it's what. Is it 12 hours difference? I'm not sure what time difference it is. It's, it's crazy time difference over there. So Morning sports, Steve. Morning sports doesn't get any better than that. I'll wait. I mean, I get up at like 645-ish. By that time, I think I'll, already, I'll have a kid, so I assume my sleep schedule won't make any sense. True. Um, so if I'm up, I'll just get to watch women's soccer. That's totally fine with me. I'll watch it. If it's on, It's maybe I'll even maybe I'll even put a couple bucks yeah, on Yeah, and the good thing for them get. is they're having it in the summertime, so their only competition is going to be baseball. They're having it in like middle of July, yeah. middle of August. So they got to – right before NFL starts, college football starts. So, yeah, it's a good time, it's a good time for him to do it. Perfect. I wish uh, the men's World Cup did that this year or last year. That yeah, cool. that, was, that, was a different, that was very different. Yeah, it was, it was a little strange, though, but it was, it was interesting. I, I just think they – I don't think that's a good way to do it in the future. Well, U.S. in 2026, I'm sure it'll be in the summer. But, yeah, because in a way you're, you're competing – especially in the U.S. fan, you're competing against college football – college basketball, NBA, there's too many things going on for the, for the World Cup. You know, it's too much yeah, well, at that time of year. Plus, we saw, like, just the fact that the NFL dominates, right? And, like, yeah, it was cool. And towards the later round, like, the USA games, they clearly got the ratings. It was incredible, right? Like, that USA-England game. And because it was on a little earlier and they weren't always on, but, like, 
if you make that essentially standalone, as you said, it's just competing against baseball. There's 162 baseball games. I can absolutely, I love the Mets. I can take a couple of those games off to watch, you know, uh, an incredible soccer match. Like, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I can also, you know, check in every once in a while. Football? No, I'm not turning that off. I'm sorry. That is just the NFL has the best marketing I've ever, exactly. I've ever seen. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, they could put a game on every week on Tuesday afternoon. They get viewership. They definitely would. I think they did during COVID, they, right? Yeah, they did like, a couple times. Yeah. Put, I mean, the Ravens played the Steelers that one time. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon. They people watched. Yep. I mean, I think they had a game years ago with the snow game, and the game started like five o'clock on a Tuesday or something like that. But right. I mean, they could they could literally put a game on whenever they wanted, and they would get viewership, especially even a daytime game because people now a lot of work from home, and people would just get on the computer and stream it. So perfect. Yeah. I can't wait. We'll get there one day. Um, so I, I do want to go back to, you know, we're still on the soccer topic, which is very interesting to me because I think it does have the opportunity to grow. On the business side, right, this is a sports business podcast. I'm always, always interested in those opportunities where something has such a big, big, big potential in the States. So you think the Apple deal is very good for the MLS. I want to push back, but I'm kind of curious where you're coming from in saying that because me as, like, again, I am not going to get Apple TV. I have too many streaming services already like i don't want another one and i don't love the mls enough to say hey give me this but as i said before when it was on espn plus that was awesome i paid attention to the red bulls or whatever wasn't blacked out at the time right like i was able to watch any of these matchups that i wanted because it was on it was the summer there was only other base like right so it's so easy to just pop it on or turn it on on espn if there was a game on or something why do you think the apple deal is actually good for the mls at this point I think it's good because you're really going to see who your fan base is because they're going to have to subscribe. Now, I, I didn't like the fact that I saw like a week or so ago that uh, on Twitter, T-Mobile is getting um, yeah. uh, free. You get with it. Is it a new subscription? You get a yeah, free. If you yeah, you get a new iPhone, you get like a free subscription to it for a year. I, I didn't like that because I'm like, that's like almost like you're giving it away to some people. Um, another, another option they gave people that if you have a season ticket to any of the teams, you get a free subscription to Apple TV, which is weird because technically you're at the game when most of the games are on. I do like the new um, format of having a lot of the games staggered real close to each other, even East and West Coast. So they're also having a show, like a kind of like a red zone type show um, in the studio going through the goals and different and fragmenting to each game back and forth. You can watch that as compared to actually watching a certain team. Um, I guess breaking it down, I think it's going to be Bad at the beginning, but good in the long run. It's going to take some lot of games some traction. I think they know that. That's why they signed a ten year deal. They know they know like everybody's not going to tune in right away, and people um, just like yourself for the first year or two are going to be like, you know what, I'm not paying for that. You know, I think they're slowly going to gain more traction as the 2026 World Cup, you know, comes upon us. And I think with the infusion of youth and talent for the U.S. Men's National Team, I think that's really going to help it. I think they're banking on that. Uh, we'll see how the women do this year. Um, in the Women's World Cup, I mean, that doesn't directly affect the MLS, but still, you know, that's going to help them as well. So I, I think in the long run, it's going to be good. I just think they have to, you know, I, I don't know the numbers of Amazon Prime with the NFL this year with the Thursday Night Football. I'm, I'm sure it wasn't what they thought it was going to be. It was probably good, but not great. And I think they're probably thinking the same thing. The people are, like, resisting now, but eventually they're just going to they're going to cave and, and get it, you know. They're like, man, I really want to see the Raiders play the Seahawks. Oh, crap, it's on Amazon Thursday night, you know. And... And, and some of the soccer star cities, I mean, my brother lives in Austin now, and, and it's, it's, they love that team, and they, they sell out every game. And I think they even had a – and St. Louis now is uh, the new team there. They've sold 50,000 season tickets. They only have 30,000 seats in the stadium, so they already have a waiting list. I'll bet. Brand new team. So, yeah. That is awesome. I, I would say it, it's very interesting, right? There are others – like I was up in Seattle a few years back, and like everybody wore – Oh, yeah. Um, well, uh, Sounders, right? Sounders, Seattle yeah. They, Sounders yeah, stuff. that team is – yeah. Portland, if I'm not mistaken, the Timbers, right? Or yep. whatever. They're also like there so there's certain cities around the country that yeah, they are diehard for it. And and I think that the the uh, it's kind of like Gal- Galazzo, if I'm not mistaken, right? That is that the Paramount Plus or the um, yes. the NBC, the Peacock version of essentially yeah, just whip around coverage. That's the best. Like whip around coverage is unless I'm w- sitting down watching the Mets, I would love to have whip around coverage of the rest of baseball because baseball is a pretty slow sport. So it's kind of nice knowing True. other it's things awesome. are going on and it's kind of that constant, right? We've kind of fell into that with red zone where, yeah, see, we're kind of making that everything's the comparison to red zone, right? It's like Kleenex and tissues. Like the opportunity to kind of have that for a sport such as soccer, I think would be awesome, especially, well, specifically for the MLS because it allows people to just always be engaged. Something's always happening because you're not like, I'm not a very, smart soccer fan if i may like i understand what's going on but i can't explain offenses i can't explain breakdowns i can see 
that's a breakaway. That's a goal. That was awesome. Or did you see that kick? That was insane. So the more of that, I think you'd get more casual fans like myself uh, included. The one thing I'll be the one thing I'll you say know. about this, I mean, to cut you off, is I, I did watch it. The one thing I didn't like personally as a fan was it seemed like even with the Red Zone type cha- uh, channel they had there, if you weren't watching a game, you could watch that, and they would go forth to the games. It was a little too much of the studio analysts talking than actually showing the live games. Oh. It's like, yeah, that's I, almost like I don't you go, like, hear them. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I, think that, I think you're like me and everybody else. Like when you watch the NFL, like Red Zone, you, you watch, you only hear the. Um, host speaking when there's nothing really going on but when something's going on he's speaking but he, they're showing the action and i think that's the one thing the mls and of course it's just the first episode of the first season so it, it's it's gonna it's gonna get there but i just think they need to in the future have less analysts talking because there's three or four games going on at one time but you're sitting there watching five people sitting around a table talking about a certain team or player and i i just i think that's that's not the route you need to go i think you need to focus on the action on the field Yes, completely agreed. Let's focus on the action because that's what people want Either to one. see. I, I don't, I don't like like Alexi Lawless. I never need to hear that guy talk again. Like, I <laughs> don't know how you feel about him or anyone out there listening feels about him. I never need to hear that guy talk again. Like, please get him off my television. I don't know what it is. Why Fox needs to shove him down our throat? I think it's kind of a collective hatred too. And I don't, I don't like to use the word hate because it's you know, <laughs> negative connotation. But that guy sucks. Yeah, I don't really have any hatred toward him. I mean, I don't. I mean, I. You know, I, I'm there's there's few and far between announcers that I too truly dislike. I mean, I so I just you know I, I I do realize a lot of the fan base though does you know critique him and there's several other ones as well that you know they constantly put on the broadcast and you know you wonder why you know I did yeah. one thing I didn't understand with the World Cup and I watched the coverage on Fox is I didn't understand the if you watched any of the studio stuff Chad uh, Johnson Ocho Cinco did you see him he was yeah. on there a lot and oh he he was on like they had like a studio show when they would show the highlights of the day's games and if you missed the games you could watch the studio show and it's show maybe 60 minutes long with commercials it was on fs1 after the that night after the games and they taped it i'm sure way before that it wasn't live but they had one of the people one of the studio analysts was chad ochocinco i'm like look no offense this guy played for the nfl for 10 years or whatever he played what is it i don't think he knows much about soccer i mean i he knew a little bit but it just it was a i don't i don't understand yeah. the choice there what why they chose him to be one of the of all the people i know he's could, so. he's huge into fifa i know yeah. that yeah but I don't think it was very it was very unusual yeah. to have him as a studio <laughs> analyst in, in, in that in that respective role. I mean, they had they had so many other ones they could choose from, and it, like you said, you might not like Lawless, and I might not like um, certain one, but they had so many to choose from. The fact that they had him, I'm kind of I was kind of shaking my head about that. So yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I actually didn't notice that. Um, I didn't watch that show, I guess. But hey, yeah, that's yeah. And I just watched it for the hi- I just watched it for the highlights, yeah. and like I said, once he's starting talking, you're just like you know, you're just like I'm checked out. I don't need to watch. Yeah, it. we don't. We don't run Fox. Maybe one day, Steve, uh, you and I will get there. But it, until then, uh, we'll keep we will keep doing what we're doing. And so, I guess uh, going back to the Apple um, piece a little bit, just kind of want to close the book on that. Like, what do you think they have to do to really? Because what it's like a ten year deal. I can't remember what is it like two hundred fifty million dollars a year or something. Uh, like two hundred fifty million uh, a total, I believe. Two hundred fifty million total for ten years. So twenty five million dollars a year. That's yeah. it. I that's maybe. nothing. Maybe two hundred fifty million dollars right. a year. Maybe two hundred fifty million dollars a year. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, we can Google it. Sorry, anyway. But like, what what do you think Apple has to do? Like, other than hoping and relying on Team USA to do well in the World Cup or the women to do well in the World Cup? Like, I think the one thing about American soccer that again, like, doesn't really draw me in too much is all our best players are playing over in Europe, right? Like I want to watch Weston McKinney on, um, you know, where I think he's on Leeds, if I'm not mistaken, and Brandon Harrison over on Leeds and, you know, Christian Pulisic over in, you know, on Chelsea. And like, I want to watch those guys play because they're American and they're playing in like one of the higher leagues. What do you think Apple has to do? And I guess soccer has to do outside of just making sure they keep those people home to really gain an even bigger traction and get more and more people to pay attention to the MLS version of the sport. Yeah, they need to keep them home, of course, which is you know obviously not possible. M- maybe in the future it could happen, but even more, they need to, MLS needs to grow more stars organically from the league. Um, the MLS Next Pro is like the minor league system now. Um, that's come about in the last several years. I, I know they're they're doing everything they can to kind of grow more homegrown stars. That even if they are in the MLS, even for a short period of time, you know who they are, and you could, you know, you can. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like kind of you know, navigate with them and, mm-hmm. and learn the league, you know. There, there's some homegrown stars that are on the national team that are coming up that I that I haven't really, I probably, I'm not really aware of. But I think that's the 
biggest thing they need that like kind of one one to three stars to come about through the MLS through the pipeline up to the major team play really well for a couple seasons preceding the World Cup and then that draws the casual viewer in that and that and I guess just some incredible games um, they did change they did change the playoff structure I kind of don't really understand why I don't think it was that I mean, it, was, it wasn't It was the way they had it set. They've changed it a couple times through the years. We're going to see how that t- it comes about. I believe it's like a best of three to start, and then it's like a sim- single elimination, kind of going after like a little bit of the baseball model in the beginning, I guess. The first, like, I, I don't know. It's, it was a little strange. I kind of read it briefly, but it's try- they're trying it. They're coming out with it this year. Um, and I, and I think that was maybe, in my opinion, a little bit of a mistake too because you're also having, I think, nine teams from each conference make the playoffs, I believe now. And there's only 15 many? teams in each conference, so yeah. it's almost like right. yeah, it's it's almost like too many are making the playoffs. But you know, um, you know, I mean, the NBA, I guess kind of in the way the NBA model, where you have the six teams make it, and then you have the play-in tournament. They're kind of doing a little bit like that, and maybe maybe a couple teams have buys. I didn't read 100 percent of what the structure was, but you know, I think they need to grow the talent from within and bring them up through the ranks uh, from the minor league system or even the USL to the MLS get those three to five stars that they can relate to that are going to be on on the World Cup team in 2026, even if they're not, like, as big as Christian Pulisic or Gio Reyna or, you know, any Mr. McKinney or any of the other players, even if they're the first guy coming off the bench or they, you know, I, I just think that's the biggest part of it, you know. And Still then, of course, cool. yeah, and, of course, I think another key thing is keeping – they did do a good job of keeping a deal with Fox and FS1 because they do show the one game week. So if you are the casual fan um, – and of course, that that all hinges on the game they pick. You got to pick the marquee teams and the marquee, you know, marquee players. You can't put on too bad. I'm, I'm not going to name teams, but too bad teams. And everybody, the average fans will be like, nah, why do I want to watch Vancouver play, you know, Salt Lake, and I don't know anybody on either team. And if you're an East Coast, you know, East Coast person, I'm not going to watch this. So yeah, they, and I, the Fox, I think it's one, maybe two games a week. I think it's just one though. So. I really appreciate how you won't name any bad teams. You won't name any analysts you don't like. I really appreciate the political nature uh, <laughs> of how you're going about it. No, no, uh, I appreciate it. Let me just say that. So we can, we can leave that one there. But I, I think soccer has a huge opportunity, right? Like I'm a big hockey fan, but we all kind of know hockey is very specific. Like if you love hockey, you love it. If you don't, maybe you'll watch the playoffs. So yeah, that's kind of what it comes yeah, down I'll to. Yeah. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm not really a hockey guy. I watch, I'm a, I grew up a Washington Capitals fan. I've still, I still can't believe they did it five, what, five years ago when they won. It was awesome. Yeah, they did win. And, um, but I, I don't really watch hockey much. I'll watch them in the playoffs if they're in it. Other than that, I'm not a, yeah, I didn't grow up watching hockey as much and I won't watch much of the regular season. And it's the same with the NBA. I, I don't really watch the NBA until it gets, and I don't really have a team because I grew up DC or Baltimore, DC area. So Washington Wizards, they've been awful for forever. So they don't even make the playoffs. But point being, I don't. I don't even watch till it gets to the last like round when I'm like, okay, now it's down to the two or four teams. I'll, I'll watch a little bit of it. And maybe that's what soccer needs to do, right? Like just make the playoffs exciting enough that you start to bring those casual fans in, right? Because that's True. where once championships are on the line, and that was always something that just confuses me about you know European soccer is like they have their playoffs during the season, but it, it's how you finish last season. So it's actually not last season's team; it's this season's this team season, that gets to yeah. compete for the championship, and it's. To me, that makes zero sense, but they've been doing it for thousands of years. Obviously not being a little facetious there, but they know what they're doing. They make a lot of money. I'm not really too worried about it. I think the opportunity to have an actual playoff system uh, here could be helpful and make it much easier for us Americans to just be like, this makes sense. Playoffs. Let's see what happens, right? I want to see who wins the championship rather than, oh, this team was the best, like, President's Trophy, right? The Caps win the President's Trophy feels like every other year. They, it took them <laughs> however long to win that one championship. And so I- I'm excited. Um I do have one last, point. Be, one last point on MLS is the fact that I'll also be interested to see when the playoffs do begin, what the structure is of games that are on Apple as compared to any games that are on network TV to yeah. see if you can draw fans in. If you only have one, you know, there's five playoff games on a Saturday and only one are, one's on TV, you're kind of like, you know, is the average fan going to pay for the subscription to Apple no. to watch the other games? That's going to be. They will not. Yeah. But I feel like everybody who has an iPhone just gets a subscription to Apple TV. I don't. So I don't actually oh, know I didn't how know it works. That. Okay. But I think, like, if you just have it, if you, like, every time you get a new phone, which is essentially every year or two, they give you, like, a free year, or at least they did before. Well, I now, do, but, like... but in, in, in uh, reference to that, too, I believe once you get the Apple TV, even the app, you have to pay extra for the MLS. So you guys yeah. still got to pay, like, $10 a month or something like that for it. Yeah. yeah. I'm real curious what those numbers are going to look like. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. And, and so really appreciate the conversation there. Let's move on. Just a little bit more time here because that was something that I'm very interested in as well. College football is – 
as a sport, my favorite sport. Like, I love college football. I love college basketball. Is the product as good as pro? No. That's why I like it more. I love chaos. I love crazy shit happening. I love the opportunity to be like, I've never seen this before in a game. I can't I can't believe I just watched it, right? In the, in the NFL, you kind of know what's going to happen once we get to a certain point. Okay, yeah, a team might come back from a 10-point deficit like, maybe, hey, we saw in the, the Super Bowl or whatever it is, 14 points. But you're not going to see the college – you know, football game where it's, you know, Oregon and TCU from a couple years ago it was 31 nothing and a half. TCU comes all the way back True. and wins the game. Like, you're not going to get that in the NFL. And when you do, it's historic, right? We had it once this year, the Vikings and Colts, and that was, like, all they people talked about yeah, for days. It's like, yeah. that's like a regular Saturday in college. <laughs> like, get out of here. Like, I couldn't care less. Get, put on a Big 12 game. Not that the Big 12 <laughs> is going to exist anymore, but put on a Big 12 game and tell me you're not friggin' entertained, right? So, Going on that, like, how do you feel about the opportunity of the expanded playoff and kind of it's really just been an invitational, what, like seven teams have made it, four teams have won. I'm just kind of using round numbers at this point. Do you think the 12-team format's going to do anything? I Honestly, I don't I, – I, I love it because that just means more college football. But, like, I still think it just, it just means Alabama's always going to be there. It just means Ohio State's always going to be there. Georgia's – like, they're just made it. So, like, it's a guarantee that the seven teams that have always been making it are going to keep making it, and yeah, we'll let these other five teams mess around, and then we'll get to the four teams that we were going to be have there anyway. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think it, I'm I'm half and half on this. I think it's it's going to be a lot of the same teams, but it also can open the door for other ones, the other you know the other five to get through. I mean, you saw TCU this year; they got yeah, blown, blown awesome. out in the championship game by Georgia, but they did make it to Not the awesome. playoff and they beat yeah. Michigan. I mean, they they made it to the final game, so I I don't, I don't think that's going to be a yearly occurrence. Um, but I definitely see teams like that that can slide through, win a game or two in the playoffs, and make things more exciting for their fan bases and for their fans. Um, and I, I just think it's 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 definitely needed to become. I thought honestly thought they would move to six or eight, but I guess they figured they just jump right to twelve instead of moving to six or eight, and then five years from now jumping to twelve or sixteen or any. I think twelve might not be the final number. Maybe they would go to sixteen. I think they'll. I don't know how many years they signed the exact contract. I believe it was. 10 years probably for they had 10 year 12 year deal previously so we'll see i think it'll stay 12 for several years and, and it'll play out but i still think you're going to see if you get to like the final four which isn't this year but next year is the first year of the 12 team playoff in most cases the three of the final four are going to be the same names you know but then you'll yeah. have that one outlier team that'll get in um it still hurts the g5 the group of five teams because it's going to be a rare occurrence when one of them gets in maybe two but i think for the most years like cincinnati in a couple years ago i think that's going to be just you know everything's going to have to break exactly right um for them to make it's kind of like the final four in basketball you know for mm-hmm. the major team you get in, everything has to fit break perfectly um so you can get in the final four and then of course you know win the national championship but college football i don't know it, i like the expanded because i the one thing they said was some people say well it waters down the regular season it does but at the same time is come mid-october it's going to be complete chaos on a saturday because even if florida state beats clemson or notre dame beats north carolina or whatever it's they're still in it, you know. A lot of so many two loss teams will still be in it. Or like this year, Alabama would have been in it, you know. Even if they would have lost the third game, they probably would have been in it. They lost two, so I mean that's what's going to be great about it. Now with the expansion, and I think like I said, the the rich get richer. Now the SEC expanded sixteen teams coming uh, Oklahoma Texas for next year. The Big Ten's got USC and UCLA coming next year, so they're sixteen. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen to the Pac-12. They seem like they can't get a media deal, so I don't know what's going to happen. I think the last thing I read was. They're getting it until the end of March and trying to cut a deal. But the last thing I read was also they were trying Apple and they're also trying Ion Television. Ion Television is like a, just a random cable network, and how many people have just Direct TV and cable stuff anymore? Are you even gonna see that? So I, I don't know. I think their best option is Apple, but then it wouldn't start till not this year, next year. They lost that LA market, but you see, I, they're in trouble. I don't know what's gonna happen with the Pac-12. It's so. it's not good. I think they'll end up just re-upping with ESPN for a much smaller amount of money. I don't know if ESPN because... even wants them really. I don't know. If they I think they want. do because they just want like West Coast game. Oh, I guess, yeah. Night. Hey, okay. look, it's eleven o'clock at night. There's only one game on. Yeah. Oregon and Washington are playing. Sweet. Yeah. Let's like I'll watch. And the sad that. thing is, <laughs> the sad thing is, the Pac-12 conference this year is going to be is going to be really really good. I mean, all the quarterbacks that are coming back. I mean, USC had a good season last year. Um, it's going to be really good this year. So it's a shame that, of course, USC and UCLA are leaving after this year. But it's a shame. We'll see where it goes this year because I think if they could somehow drag that. Media, I mean, the media contract ends uh, after this coming uh, year, so next summer, I guess. 
they could drag it out this year and, and maybe get some more eyes on the product this season. I mean, the Pac-12 Network. I've always said, is it, I mean, does anybody who have ever watched it? I mean, it's it's not even no it's not even available on like DirecTV or Dish Network or any of the major cable networks. Comcast, I don't think has it. So I I, I mean, I can't imagine even if the game is the best game ever, nobody can see it. So maybe the best option is for them to get a streaming deal. So. Who was the Pac-12 commissioner that everyone loves? Larry. Uh, he left. He yeah. left. Uh, well, he did all this. Yeah. This was all his fault. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, shout yeah. out that guy. Made yeah. millions of dollars and bounced. Ruined yep. an He's entire gone. conference yep. that had all this history and pageantry and the Rose Bowls. You have the Rose Bowl and somehow you ruined this entire conference. Shout out that guy for making his millions. Uh, yeah. um, you love to see it. But, I mean, I love college football. I'm excited. I, I'm all for the 12 team. It's 100%. I totally agree with you going to 16 because – money uh we see how True. much this this sport is literally just ran by the tv networks and money at this point so once they say wait you mean there's four more playoff games we could get because we don't have to give those teams buys yeah let's do it and it's just gonna become like one that thing, i agree with you like keep going one thing i'll add on is too is i think what you saw with tcu and i think you'll see with other teams too that they can get in the playoff and the, the playing field might be a little more level is the transfer portal so mm-hmm. teams are picking up transfers you go to like like we'll see with texas this year um the two quarterbacks, Archie Manning, is coming in, and then I read something the other day that they're going to battle out for the quarterback spot. So yeah. whoever doesn't win the job might transfer. You know, <laughs> I yep. mean, it's a world where we live in where it's instantaneous. If they come in and they don't, they don't start, and they're like, "Well, I'm not sitting on the bench for two or three years." So boom, transfer a portal and you go somewhere else. And that's what that's where a conference like the Pac-12 can pick up good quality players, even mid-major, like I say, mid-major for college basketball, college football, group of five teams, or even lower level power five teams, like and that are in the bottom of the Big Ten. Um, Iowa got a good transfer. I believe Iowa got a good transfer. Kate quarterback. McNamara, yeah. Yeah. From so it's like you, that normally they wouldn't get, but he's he's a he went to a bigger school. He couldn't get playing time, so he's going somewhere else, and he I wants to it. play immediately. And that's that's what's going to happen. So transfer portal has made it so 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 much more interesting. It, it makes it more like a twenty uh, you know a twelve month year sport, right? Really? Like you kind of have to catch up on all of it. You know, you have those couple windows. There's a spring window. There's the January window. Um, the January window kind of screws everything up because you're trying to get people in before classes start, but in reality, it screws up a lot of bowl season. So, like, hopefully they can figure out something there. I don't know, but that's just a that, that's another thing. But no, I love it. I love every second of it. I love college football so much. And yeah, I'm so excited when Arch Manning beats out Quinn Ewers. Like this kid was the number two <laughs> rated prospect in his class. Goes to Ohio State just because he wants the NIL deal. This poor kid gets screwed over because he signs a terrible NIL contract, so he doesn't get any money because he never touched the field. So then he transfers back to Texas where he was originally going to play. He then gets there. He was kind of hurt this year, so he's, he wasn't doing that great. So then you bring in Arch, and now this poor kid went from the number two prospect, right, to, I don't know, man, you're going to transfer again somewhere. Good luck. So we'll see what happens. That'll be a lot of fun. But, see, this has been awesome. I, could be, I feel like we could just talk about all the shit that's going on in these sports from a business kind of perspective and angle, mostly around the money. But there's the one last thing I do want to talk to you. So you have this app idea. I don't want to give too much away. So I'll actually just say you're an entrepreneur. As I said before, you have this really cool app idea, maybe a little sports betting involved, maybe a little whip around coverage. Like we've been talking about. I don't know. Maybe I said too much. Steve, talk to me a little bit about some of this stuff that you're cooking up in the background behind all the, uh, all the content that you're putting out. Yeah, sure. So I think the, I think the, I see the future and I, uh, with the younger generation, I think a lot of them, a lot of people uh, feel the same way that they don't really want to tune in to watch a whole game. So I think in the they're future, they're missing out, man. They're that? missing out. They're just missing out. Yeah, but I just think that's how it's going. And I, I think, and I think also, and something taken away from it would be the fact that say you're at the Tennessee against Alabama game, but you want to know what's going on with the Mississippi Mississippi State game. Well, an app that can you can pull up on your phone and say you bet on that game. You can check. The status of what's going on with the game, and I'm not just checking this, talking about the score. See the game live, what's going on. See the statistics, all the things you can make live in-game bets. It's just something that's coming. Um, it's going to be a subscription-based service, so you pay like a monthly subscription fee, and, and of course you have access as much as you want. Um, I, I just think that's where it's heading. I think a lot of sports fans in the future are not going to have time to sit down and watch a three or four-hour football game. They, some of them don't even now, so. Or you know a three-hour basketball game, but they and especially the younger generation. I'm I'm 45 myself. I mean I I don't think um, any kind of I don't know what the what's younger than millennials. I forget the phrase of Gen uh, Gen Z. Gen Z. Yeah. That. So yeah. So I just really don't think they're going to sit there and watch a game. Um, I think the future of sports is going to be more like kind of like in and out. You can you know can watch a game for a little bit and then come back to it. Um, also notifications that you know, the game's closed or something like that. Because if you do watch it and it's a blowout and you go out, you know, I still remember, I guess the best example of this is uh, from 
not a good example, but I remember I was watching the game, the Oilers uh, Bills game in 1992 when they came back. I was watching in my friend's house. I walked out the door when they scored that touchdown. It was like 35 to nothing, and I was like, "Oh, this game's over. I'm going home. I got homework to do." It was like a Sunday afternoon, late in the afternoon. <laughs> and my friend called me like two hours later, and he said, "Hey, you got to turn it on. They're in overtime." I'm like, what are you talking about? They were killing him. He's like, "They just came back," and they was like, "I was like, yeah, right." And he's like, "No, turn on the TV," and I did, and I was like, "Holy crap!" They did come back, but something like that I never would have known about until he told me that. I would have seen it the next day. You know, and, and something like that. Now everybody has a phone. Everybody has it with them. I mean, like I say now, also, you walk out of your house in the morning, you walk out with, some people walk out with three things, their phone, their money, and their keys for their car. You really don't even need your money anymore because you can pay with stuff on your phone. So you really need your keys to your car if you're driving somewhere in your phone. And that's the new world we live in. And I think, you know, it's, it's and another example is the Christian Leitner shot I, uh, against Kentucky in 1992. I was watching that game at another friend's house, and then we went, we were, I was in, high school and we and I try to meet girls in the mall and I didn't even know what happened because back then you know once you walk out the door and you're not in front of a tv and went to the mall walking around and hanging out with friends like the, later that the next morning my dad told me he was like oh my god he said that shot I was like what and I turned on the tv and there was a the highlights and I was like jeez you know of course nowadays you know about that in, in a half a second because you just get alert on your phone something like that so it's still coming about but I, that's kind of like the the way the way I, I see yeah it. I see. I, I understand where you're coming from. I I would push back only because like that Alabama Tennessee game. If you were wondering what was happening on a different college but football game, like, you're out of your mind. That game this year. No, no, I'm just. I'm just, not using I know that what you're as saying. a direct example. Yeah. I know what you're saying. That game this year obviously was bonkers. Like I, yeah. I loved every second of it. It was probably four and a half hours long, and it's one of those things. I don't care how long the game is if it's good. I care how long the game is if it's bad. Right. Like that makes it. And then thankfully I can just turn it off and move to something else. But I do, you know, and and I think what you're saying makes a lot of sense because. Because we're seeing it right with a, with the NBA, the NBA audience skews a lot younger. We're seeing the ratings for the games kind of drop, but the subscriptions for NBA League Pass are going up, and the amount of social clips and the views on the YouTube highlights and all that stuff is absolutely skyrocketing. So, from a numbers perspective, what does a TNT look at it and they say, "Well, why do I have to give you ten billion dollars if like the ratings aren't really that good and I can't monetize this on advertising?" But at the same time, I bet TNT, like, all of their clips, NBA on TNT, all those clips of Charles Barkley and Kenny Smith running up to the, you know, run a, those clips alone get a million views or whatever. And, like, True. you kind of have to realize it from that perspective that the audience is encompassing. It's, it's that halo effect of everything around the NBA, right? It's the fashion. It's the, it's the food. It's the ideas. It's the culture around the NBA specifically. I see where you're coming from, and again, because that audience skews a lot younger, it, it makes sense from that whip around coverage, from looking at other things, that betting angle. We're seeing a lot of that. That's just kind of injected uh, into into everything with sports now because the money is there, right? I work for a betting company, so it, it's just one of those things where I believe that it makes a lot of sense where you're coming from, and if when you execute it, I'm I'm very excited to have you come back on. You can tell us a little bit about it, but until then, we'll we'll kind of leave it at that, I guess. That I, I'll sense. give you an example too of what I thought about this 100. Uh, percent The fact that I went to the Penn State. Um, who they play? Uh, Central Michigan game this year, and they're stay in Beaver Stadium late September. And I was at the game, and I tried to. And the Wi-Fi wasn't great there; it wasn't terrible. But I tried to check the score or something. And I'm looking around. I was like, "How is there not like a, number one a scoreboard here with other scores from other games?" I guess they didn't want you to know or care because you're watching the Penn State game. But number two was they never even during the whole game announced like, "Oh, uh, Michigan's beating Nebraska," or you know, "Michigan State's beating Ohio State" or something. I was very surprised about that, and I was like, "This is the perfect." thing for something like this and that granted you get the wi-fi connection is you can just sit here and check out another game and not just the score while you're here but otherwise you're like in the your time warp where you have no idea what's going on with any other game except for this game right here because you you're not seeing anything on the screen telling you the scores even nfl stadiums now they have the other scores from the other games i mean so or they'll go around the league this is what's happening you know because th that's what people want i mean i think that's what's going to hurt the nfl in, the, in years they've hurt themselves with the red zone because the fact is I think more people are like, wow, I can sit on my couch and watch, you know, seven games at one time on a Sunday afternoon than having to go down to the game. And if the game's not that good or if the weather's not good, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out in the next generation of fans. I know this generation of fans, like my age and older, you know, they'll go to games night and day. But I think in the next generation of fans, they're not going to get, you know, them to come out there when they can sit there and, you know, stay in their house and do four different things while they're watching the game and checking their bets and everything else. They've made the product so darn good. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Like, that's the, kind of the funny part, right? They've put themselves in this position because 
yeah, I'd much rather, you know, I want, I watch the, I watch the Giants games, right? Like if the Giants are on, I'm watching the Giants. But my second TV is Red Zone. <laughs> or if I'm at a buddy's house and the Giants aren't on, or the Giants are on primetime or whatever, I'm just watching Red Zone. And, you know, it's just one of those things that it's – the product is so damn good. It's so much more comfortable in my house. Now, I do love to get to a game once a year. There's nothing like it, especially if you can go to an earlier game and the weather's kind of nice, like those September-October games. Yeah. It's so much fun being there with everybody, especially when your team wins. There's, like, nothing like it. But, like, yeah, just one, one's good because it's pretty expensive to go and you're sure. driving. you got to sit. Like, yeah, you can drink a couple beers and eat a sandwich Hands in the parking up. lot, which yeah. is always a blast. But then you're in the game and it's, like, $18 a beer. And it's like, all right, well, like, you know, I guess I'm sobering up now. Someone, <laughs> I guess I can drive home right now. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things. And I totally agree with you, man. I'm very excited for the day when you have it figured out, Steve. But this uh, great conversation, man. This was yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank I appreciate you very it. much. Appreciate it. Um, give, us, give us the websites. Give us the social handles. Tell us everything where they can go find a little bit more of the stuff that you guys are uh, you're putting out. Sure. Uh, websites, www.justcollegebasketball.net, www.justcollegefootball.net, and www.justussoccer.net. Follow me on Twitter. I'm on there a good amount, especially this time of year, uh, college basketball season, talking about games and teams. Um, at Steve Eagle, just my name, S-T-E-V-E-H-I-E-G-E-L. I'll say it again, S-T-E-V-E-H-I-E-G-E-L. I'm actually a real person. My picture's there, so I'm not just a handle like March Madness Thank you. or, you know, something like that, you know. So you always, you, you know you know who's actually behind the um, the handle, not not just a random person. So um, I love yeah, it. follow me along and... You know, more more stuff to come, and looking forward to a great tournament. I think this is one of the best, going to be the best tournaments in years because it's going to be wide open. I think anybody, I mean, there's 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 ten to twelve teams that can win it, but there's probably twenty five teams that can make the final four. So it's going to be the, that selection show is going to be very interesting to watch on Sunday because a lot of it's going to come down to the seating and the brackets. You know, it's course. going to be so much fun. It's one of my favorite, I mean, times of the year, right? Especially this first weekend, those first two days, sixteen games each day. Yep, sixteen. And then you go down sixteen Friday. Eight, Right, and there's nothing like it. And then you kind of like go down to eight ge- eight games in the Saturday and Sunday. You're like, this is easy. Like, I could do this. This is not a problem, right? And then you get after that, and it's actually like high quality teams in most situations. Maybe a Cinderella or two. I still, I still those... think the best. I still think the best games are the Sweet Sixteen, the Elite Eight games. I actually, the, yeah, the, the quality, Elite Eight games, yes. the Elite Eight games, Elite Eight games for years, I've always thought were the best because the fact that you're playing to get to the Final Four means so much to some teams that hardly or never can get there. And I think those games on Saturday and Sunday are the biggest games, you know, and, and, and sometimes the best games. So usually one of those four games on Saturday or Sunday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday, will be, in a, will be a, a memorable game. I remember. Classic. Yeah, classic game. I, every, every year at least one of them, if not two of them, is a classic game. I love it. I can't wait. Good stuff, man. Well, thank you so much, Steve. Again, uh, Steve Hegel, he's an entrepreneur. He's a sports content creator. Oh, we never got to the John Wooden Award vote. Maybe we'll get back to that some other time. I appreciate you. Oh, I haven't but... made my vote for this year. It's coming up in a couple oh. weeks. But, yeah, uh, I voted mm-hmm. on the uh, – for years, I voted on it, and um, looking forward to voting again, men's and women's. Um, and you know, it, it's they have the award show in Los Angeles, uh, like a week after the Final Four. I've never been personally, but yeah, they have the award show out there. It'd be interesting to see who who wins this year. Um, uh, and Zach Eady's the front runner for the men's award, um, and I believe the front runner for the women's award. I, I, I would you know say is Caitlin Clark from Iowa. So they're both great players, and a lot of Big Ten flavor in there. So. A lot of Big Ten in there, yeah. That, that Big Ten bias, of course. But no, uh, in sincerity, man, this is absolutely fantastic. I'll put the handle. I'll put um, all the websites down in the show notes in the description for everyone. I appreciate it. Um, Steve, thank you for your time. I appreciate the audience for theirs. Time's the only thing we don't get more of. So thank you very, very much for yours. Other than that, man, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Bye. You're welcome.